Happy Monday out there, folks. It's Darius Dell here to present our Macro Minute for Monday, June 27, 2022. Starting with markets, we have stocks up this morning, commodities mixed with base metals leading, crypto down, dollar up, global bond yields up. Market moving headlines, got a big week for hawkish central bank speak. Uh, Jerome Powell, Christine Lagarde, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey will appear together on a panel at the ECB's annual forum for central banking uh, in Centra, Portugal on Wednesday. Cool place. Uh, They'll exchange views on policy with the trade-off between quelling inflation and cushioning growth. Uh, with, as a potential focus. Uh, Powell's obviously very concerned about inflation. Uh, I don't think growth will be a big focus on him, out of him. We also have St. Louis Fed President James Bullard speaking Wednesday as well. So obviously those are the two two of the more hawkish members of the FOMC speaking this week. Uh, the day will be back in loaded in terms of um, some of the key economic releases we're going to receive. So we get the US PCE report on Thursday. Uh, the market's expecting a pretty big shift up in core PCE on a month on month basis, uh, potential for a downside surprise there. Um, they could re- really um, sort of further catalyze what we're seeing as a, a bear market rally here. Uh, Eurozone TPI out this Thursday as well. And then you get ISM manufacturing PMI on Friday. Those are all the big ticket economic releases this week. So be aware of that heading into later this week. And then lastly, if China reopening gradually, uh, Chinese economy showed some improvement in June as COVID restrictions were ga- gradually eased, although the recovery remains muted. Uh, the outlook uh, based on Bloomberg's aggregate index of eight early indicators for the month. The overall gauge returned to a neutral level after deteriorating for two straight months. Uh, economic activity picked up in June after the financial hub Shanghai lifted its lockdown, allowing businesses to restart and most residents to leave their home. We're going to continue to see an improvement in Chinese economic statistics throughout the summer months. So this is something that investors should be aware of and certainly not short uh, in expectations terms. Looking at big movers, uh, Shanghai Composite. Uh, uh, up 0.9% day over day to up 8% month over month, you know, really pricing in a lot of this improvement from a growth cycle perspective. Uh, China's growth cycle upturn, very, very, very different than the growth cycle downturn we continue to observe uh, in the U.S. and across most of the global economy. Japan's Nikkei 225 index uh, up 1.4% to unchanged month over month. Get the Bloomberg Industrial Metals Index up big this morning, 1.1% to to only down 14% month over month. And then lastly, 10-year nominal treasury yield up six basis points to plus 44 basis points month over month. Getting into our volatility adjustment momentum signals and probable ranges, uh, U.S. dollar index, that's still bullish FAM, still uh, getting closer to the lower boundary of the probable range, but not quite there yet. Gold bearish FAM still in the middle of its probable range, 10-year nominal treasury yield. Backing off the towards it was a going towards the lower boundary of the probable range, but backing off this morning got 38 basis points of upside with 13 basis points of downside. Uh, high yield credit spreads, those continue to be bullish fans, uh, very much in the middle of the range there. Uh, sorry, uh, SP 500 that is bearish fans getting towards the upper boundary of the probable range. Uh, you got 0.9 percent of upside versus 8.7 percent of downside. Uh, we could see that you know extend itself a little bit more. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked if we saw something that looks a little bit like this this week. You got some big chunky uh, quarterly uh, rebalancing flows headed your way. You got the J.P. Morgan hedge equity collar, put spread collar. That's got to get rolled. A lot of that movements of that negative delta out of the market. You, know, you could see a pretty sizable uh, up week here. Uh, but again, we remain in sell the rip mode. Uh, if you've not had a chance, and by the way, this market's given investors so many chances to get out. Had a chance to get out in early February, had a chance to get out in early April, had a chance to get out in early June. And uh, if you didn't take those chances, you're getting another chance here because uh, we ultimately don't think we're anywhere near where we think uh, the terminal downside of the market is likely to be in this liquidity cycle and growth cycle downturn. No, oh, by the way, we're about to add a profit cycle downturn as well, heading into Q2 earnings season. So be aware of that from a from medium term catalyst perspective. VIX neutral VAMs in the middle of its probable range. NASDAQ 100 bearish VAMs overbought. You're probably going to see it push through the upper bound of its probable range in the coming days if we continue to see those flows have an impact, outsized impact on the market. Uh, bearish VAMs Russell, similar dynamic as it relates to the NASDAQ. Uh, bearish fans, Bitcoin getting close to the upper boundary of its probable range, 6% of upside versus 24% of downside. Ethereum, bearish vamps getting close to the upper boundary of its probable range, only 5% of upside with 37, 36% of downside. Shanghai Composite, neutral vamps getting close to the upper boundary of its probable range with 5.7% of downside uh, to the lower boundary. WTI crude oil, bullish fans still deeply oversold. Uh, same thing with agricultural neutral VAM still deeply oversold and industrial metals bearish VAMs even deeply oversold even after the uh, bounce here. So with that, Darius Dell presenting our macro minute for Monday, June 27, 2022. Uh, everyone have a great week. Best of luck out there. We'll catch you back here tomorrow. Cheers.